Hey, I wanted to do a video on geoengineering projects that I think are feasible and worthwhile. Um, so I think cloud formation is something that we could do uh, oh, in a real way. And I, I don't believe in, you know, chemtrails and all that stuff. I, I, I do believe they're spraying chemicals on us. I don't believe they're spraying chemicals for the formation of clouds. Um, you know, maybe pesticides kill mosquitoes, maybe, uh, you know, uh, fertilizers, um, maybe germ warfare. But I don't think it's necessarily... Um, chemically engineered for the formation of clouds, if they are doing anything at all, because it's just a, their pattern of behavior, to be honest. Um, but I do think we could, and I think it would require the transportation of large amounts of, of fluid, water, uh, primarily, but not necessarily and completely, uh, up to a high altitude um, and then put out in some sort of misting or fogging uh, machine, whether it's, you know, atomized through high pressure or uh, electrical current or whatever um, mechanism, it, it, maybe it's high enough for just dropping it is, is enough. Um, but I do think it, it requires some some uh, actual engineering to make clouds in a serious way. Um, why couldn't you just use like a mountaintop and pump water up there? Well, I imagine you could, but the problem with that is, um, A, the access to water is probably less than ideal, and B, the location matters. So if you are going to make a cloud, um, you would want to extract as much of that water back out of the atmosphere uh you know sooner rather than later uh the idea is that to prevent the buildup of, of gas um so you're using a cloud to reflect sunlight and you are absorbing um carbon dioxide when the uh, water vapor bonds when the H2O bonds with CO2, uh, that's part of, that's like the first thing H2O wants to do is bind with CO2. And then it falls out of the air, taking some CO2 with it. So that, I believe, is a viable thing that we could do as a society. I do think that the mere reflection project or, um, math problem or inventor whatever uh is makes sense to me i don't i think it would take a lot of convincing to have people give up property or to go out in the desert and lay mirrors down um to reflect sunlight back up to the sky just like build a, a mirror factory right next to the Sahara Desert and just that's your job all day long you make mirrors and and put them out in the desert and then you got like one guy and just cleans the mirrors off <laughs> you know that's I, I think that as um, a legitimate geoengineering project it's real and it might be the most effective but is culturally people would have to get hit in order to actually do that. They would never do that just by, oh, you made a compelling argument. Okay, I'm going to build a factory and make mirrors and lay them out in the field. I mean, until it's too late. But I think that that makes sense. I think that, and I say get hit. I mean, we have public servants. We should just make them do it. <laughs> or whatever. You know, it should be the focus of our society instead of uh, building weapons of war. It should be building weapons of weather control.
and it's biblical, but it's necessary. So the um <clears throat> another geoengineering uh project I think is worthwhile and should be state funded and brought to scale is biochar production. Now this is a little bit of a catch twenty two and it really depends on the technology. Um biochar is taking biomass, hopefully um dead biomass that's decaying, um if not fast growing for the purpose of uh generating biochar. Hopefully it's like fast growing plant. Anyway, the the production of biochar is to burn biomass in the absence of oxygen. So there's no oxygen in this combustion process and it's just heat. And in that situation, you can basically off gas all the stuff. And then in a perfect world and nobody, and I say this because nobody, in my opinion, out there is actually doing this, but technically you could recapture those off gases and condense them now or put them through filters and um, extract the the potential toxins that are in them um, but yeah the burning of um, biomass without oxygen just pure heat and in that perfect situation, you are essentially grabbing all the carbon out of it, and you can use that carbon uh, for two purposes. You can make steel with it, or you can um, use it as fertilizer. And the whole essential aspect to it is that if you use it as fertilizer, which you, you certainly should, um, you are stimulating the growth of ever faster growing uh, and larger yields on the same land as that um, microbiology starts to take root, which again, I understand can be implanted. It's not biochar by itself, it has to be doped with, you know, probiotics essentially. Uh, so that the soil is alive. If the soil is not alive, it's not going to ever be healthy. It needs minerals and it also needs to be a living soil. Anyway, the biochar brings life to the soil by offering the um, bacteria and such that live in the soil a habitat. And that's all. So... But in doing so, that creates, like, two generations into the process, a carbon-negative cycle, because your larger yields are producing biochar that's offsetting uh, the coke that was uh, essentially coal, a coal product previously, um, and in that carbon um, serves a purpose in, in modern society. We use a tremendous amount of carbon in the production of high grade steel. And we need to not get it from coal. So we need to get it from somewhere else. So this is a geoengineering project as much as an agricultural project, but really it's an agricultural project. Another thing that I think could be engineered into a combination uh, cloud seeding station um, would be the uh, iron seeding of the ocean. So, and I say station because to do it, I think in a, a scalable way isn't loading up a boat and... Um, with iron and going out to the ocean and going, <laughs> sprinkling the iron about and 
in hoping uh, an Ozzy film takes place and saying, okay, I observed X amount of carbon. And believe it or not, there are companies that are doing just that and getting paid to do so. I don't begrudge them for making an effort because scale and cost is. But if, if at a state level, geoengineering is going to be deployed in a serious fashion, I think it requires stations that are essentially repurposed oil rigs. And these oil rigs are going to uh, now power uh, iron seeding uh, algae boom factories and ideally simultaneously um, engaging in cloud seeding. You know, and I could imagine a way uh, to engineer a product. You know, depend it's a lot of a lot of these oil rigs aren't on very deep waters with large temperature gradients. But with outside power it's feasible I think to repurpose a lot of the oil rigs into um, iron seeding stations and uh, and cloud seeding stations and um and I think that would be a legitimate now something like that you you can't capitalize on like a deep sea project where the benefit would be um a large temperature gradient you could access minerals from the deep sea uh, in, pump, in the process of the of capitalizing on the temperature uh, difference turn a motor and pump that water up and use that uh, mineral rich water unto itself meanwhile generating clouds for the rocky mountains to condense which is like a true God level uh, geoengineering project, seriously. Uh, more, um, you know, childlike, not godlike, <laughs> uh, geoengineering project would be to repurpose uh, old oil rigs and to convert them into offshore iron seeding and cloud seeding stations. That again would require huge amounts of power. Which have, would have to be generated cleanly, uh, which is an engineering feat unto itself. So, I think that there are legitimate projects out there, and I could, I mean, the iron seeding of the oceans, and it's not just iron, but mineral seeding uh, for the purpose of stimulating uh, photoplanktons would. Um, undoubtedly be required just required for um absorbing additional co2 it just be required we're gonna have so many forest fires it's not even reasonable to worry about the land right now we should just say okay let's make the oceans green <laughs> like quickly because we can't count on anything on land. We can't count on anything on land being green. So we gotta make sure the ocean starts turning green so it can absorb some CO2. Uh, either way, right away. Um, and, and cloud seeding, again, it's just overloading. If we have too much gases in the air, right, we need to extract gases from the air so it seems counterproductive to put additional gases in the air but the idea would be to overload the water vapor cycle in order to create additional cloud cover sooner which is a negative feedback one of the few um and um additionally oh, potentially rinse some additional gases out. It depends what you put up, but chances are you're going to be binding with stuff already up there and pulling it down with you. So that's, um, 
that's the objective. 